Hi, welcome to Inventors Dojo. My name is Henry and I'm an inventor on a mission to make and sell my invention. My invention is the easiest, most efficient tool to use to get your car out of sand, ice, mud, or snow. If today's your first time in this channel, welcome and I hope you enjoy the videos. Please consider subscribing so you could get updates on what's going on with my invention. In today's video, we're going to talk about testing my invention again. If you remember, I went through this process with the last design of the same invention, which was the breaker bar and socket configuration. If you have not seen that video, I will put a link in the description. Today, you're going to find out just how ignorant I was. I still am, just not as much, not in this subject anyway. In the last video, I talked about how this little guy right here is a 3D printed model, not a prototype. But at the time, I thought that this was enough. I thought that this plastic was not going to go through any stress because it was just being moved by the tire. What I did do was print it again with 100% infill. For those who are not familiar with 3D printing, infill in this case is a 3D printing term, which is the internal structure of the 3D printed part. So if this is 15% infilled, it means that 85% of the part is hollow and in this case it would be too weak to sustain any kind of stress. It will break very easily just like this. But if it has 100% infill, the part is much stronger and can sustain a reasonable amount of stress. If you're interested to learn more about infill, Maker's Muse made a great video about it. I will put a link in the description so you can watch it. After I printed it with 100% infill, I wanted to test, but I knew it was not ready to be tested in a real way because I simply didn't know what was going to happen. Imagine purposely getting stuck in a puddle of mud just to test it and then not being able to get out. Nah, no thank you. I found an empty lot, installed my fancy new device, and moved my car. It should come as no surprise to find out that the whole thing broke almost instantly. It is worth noting that when you work with 3D printing, there are many things that could go wrong. If you listen to some people, you almost have to build a climate controlled clean room where you can put your 3D printer so it is safe from things like humidity, dust particles in the air, the slight shifting of the tectonic plates, little things like that. And while some of those things are not without merit, and I know that most 3D printing channels will disagree, most of those things are negligible. But I did not know that at the time. It's amazing what I will believe when I want to. So I built all sorts of enclosures and safeguards to ensure that the failure did not come from some slight change in the barometric pressure caused by some UFO flying by or some such. I must have printed about 10 of these just trying to make it work. At the time, I was looking for the cause of the failure and a way to avoid having to spend money I did not have on things I did not need. The tricky part in my case was I did not know what I needed or what I did not need. So for all I knew, I was avoiding the solution to my problem. But research and development is never cheap or easy. In the end, it all boils down to the old cheap, good, fast dilemma. If you don't know what that is, let me know in the comments and I will explain. I thought my design was good enough. So the problem had to be the material I was using. I also knew that trying to get this made out of metal was going to be very expensive. If you don't believe me, check out the video I will put in the description. My answer had to be somewhere between 3D printing plastic and machined metal, or a change in the design and different material. One of the things to keep in mind when you're working on this kind of thing, especially if you're working by yourself, is that you're really fighting multiple battles, most of which you're not aware of. In my case, I was trying to solve my problem, true, but I was also misguided by a few other things. My own desire for this to work, other people's opinions about what might affect my 3D prints, my lack of resources, and a bunch of other things. The misfortune is that I was not able to see it until I stepped back and saw things with clarity. And that's all the time we have for today. But please hit the like and subscribe button so you could get notified when I upload the next video where I will be telling you this cool new way I found to make my prototype. I am so glad that you joined us today and thank you for subscribing. Don't forget to share this video with someone who you think might enjoy it. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Stopping video. Oh, shit, this is not recording. Ah, you mother. And this is gonna suck if I have to be do this whole.